everyone, I'm Javi, I can draw. Welcome to another week and welcome to another video. Now, if you're new to this channel, you will see that the last four videos actually have the same content that you're about to see right now. But this is just one video, so you can just watch this one and that's it. What I want to do this week is I want to learn how to draw human expressions, like the face, how it moves, how, how like this part moves, how this part moves, like everything. Now, uh, I, instead of trying to focus on how the mouth moves and how the eyebrows move, I thought that the best thing to do was to focus on which parts of the face are still and static and don't have any flexibility and which parts do. So that took me to thinking that the best way to think about expressions was maybe focusing on what this part of the face does and how it compresses and how it pulls and everything and what this part of the face does regarding the eyebrows and take that as a first step to trying to figure out how to draw not just one expression but all expressions and this is what I found. Okay so this is my good friend Refi, the reference face and we're going to use it today mainly her head shape to do some expressions. Now what I did here I just drew her head and her face and what I'm going to try to see based on what I think I know is to differentiate the stretchy parts of the face from the non-stretchy parts of the face clearly. Now obviously the nose is not going to be a stretchy part. This is not going to move. The nostrils though this part of the nose is going to move a bit depending how the rest of the face moves. Now, the most stretchy part of the face is clearly the mouth because it opens, it doesn't involve using any skin once it's open, so all the stretchiness can be focused here. Now, the other parts that I think that are fairly stretchy are, well, not this one, but actually, of course, this one. Now, this all becomes part of one big stretchy thing see you can just move and grab this but once you start getting close to the eyes and the nose you know the parts of the skin that are closer to bone it gets less stretchy clearly so this is the stretchier part of the face this is not very stretchy and this is another stretchy part of the face. It is the one that moves your eyebrows. You know, this is also pretty stretchy, but not as stretchy as this. That is the most stretchy part. Now, if you start thinking about what type of moves the stretchy parts make, you can see that while the eyebrows can mainly go up and down, and while you can raise your eyebrows like this, but it's mainly up and down. This part, the most stretchy part of the face, is actually, well, pretty similar. Because this part, the only thing that you can do is this. And then go down, if you are stretching your face. Now the move, the, I'm sorry, the mouth is a bit more malleable. Because you can do things like this, and this. But you know, you're using actually all of these parts of the face to move your mouth so the only let me think about this so the only parts that actually are moving and compressing like muscles are this part this part and this part there is like all the skin here this is where the tension goes that's why i think that are the two moving parts of the most stretchy part of the face now, I know that this sounds a bit insane, but I'm going to show you why I'm talking about this in just a second. So, we had this lovely girl with the stretchy face. Now, let's use her and her skull, actually, to draw some um, stretchy faces. So, I drew some guidelines of what to draw, so I don't forget what I'm trying to draw because when I'm filming I get a bit nervous and I forget. Now, before we begin, there's something else that I want to tell you. The most important thing about what, that I discovered while practicing drawing expressions like this is that when 
you you when you are for example opening your mouth and everything like this stretches so does everything like this comes down so you should focus on making eyes a bit larger a bit taller than you usually make them like if you're this you compress the eye if it's this the eye gets a bit larger and that's something that Disney artists use a lot and that's what I was trying to imitate when I thought about making this video so I hope I get it right so a smile now as you can see from this tiny skull that I draw that this are, these examples are going to be with the mouth closed we're going to do some open mouth examples in a bit so since this is stretching this way I'm going to stretch this nostril just a bit. You can see what when you're smiling, it just, you know, it grows a bit wider. So since I'm smiling and all this is going up, this is going to get a bit chunkier. And now the eyes. So I'm going to draw just some quick basic shape for the eyes and it is smiling so this is going up it is going up and then we draw the eyes since this is all compressed here this eye this eyelid is going to go a bit up like this you know I mean, I know that I'm not drawing the sexiest smile, but you see what I'm trying to do, right? Like, well, if I just do this, it becomes a lot sexier. Nobody likes wrinkles. So anger. Now anger, we have to focus on this. See, since we're going to focus on this, on the eyebrows, what you should consider is that the eyebrow when it goes down it brings a lot of skin here to this part so you can't do eyes like really round you have to consider that flesh that is coming down with the rest of the eyebrow so you, the eye is going to the eye top eyelid is going to be a bit closed I'm trying to see what I'm doing here. It's going up, right? This is going up. And it is, if it is going up, the nostril is going to be a bit wider. So this, this eyelid here makes more sense. I'm going to make them all just looking to the side because it is a bit easier. There you have it, an angry face. Suspicion. Kind of like the rock face. Suspicion. So. This is going to be more like... This wave goes like here, but actually all the... is focusing here. Suspicion. So in this one, you can make this eye like this. A little bit closer the mouth is going to come this way so this is going to be a bit compressed the eye is going to be a bit closer I'm just trying to figure this out while I'll do it I have like no secrets I'm trying to figure this out right now because I'm thinking like if we go back just a bit like a smile is going to go all up and anger is going to be focusing all of this here. Suspicion is going to be also, well, you know, half of the face is going to be concentrating here and the other one is going to be expanding. So in, from this side it's going to be like this, but from this side, you know, since this is going up, 
and this is going to be like well not going up or just relaxed the eye is going to be just a bit taller and I know that I'm drawing cartoony but this actually applies to any drawing I believe I haven't tried yet this few expressions with the mouth closed now I want to try a few with the mouth open so we here have the template <sighs> let's try this again so smile you know that from the smile this is going up and this is going up as well can now see the teeth in most of the expressions because all of them are going to have the mouth open. Since all of this is concentrating here, this is going to be just a little bit closed. And since this is a happy person, it's going to be like this. Okay, next one. Surprise! Now surprise also goes up, but here it goes down. Surprise! Let's see. So here the eye can be like really really stretched. That's right. Does it look like a surprise face? It looks like a surprise face, right? So surprise. Everything goes away from the eyes and the nose. So they get stretched. Anger. Let's go with anger. This is going to be the screwing face from the screwing faces video. If you haven't watched that, watch it. It's awesome. There you go. There's a screaming face. This one concentrates all its energy here, even with the open mouth. Because, you know, you might get confused because when a mouth is open you can feel like maybe the energy is going all down but it's not you have to focus on what these muscles are doing I'll concentrate it here eyes on the side so I don't have to waste your time So what do you think? Okay, I think I'm a lot closer than I thought I would be. Because I was thinking all morning about how to approach faces like all type of expressions. And I think that trying to figure out if you had to split this in two and trying to figure out which direction this is going and which direction this is going, I think is uh, super helpful. So after doing that, I decided that I was going to do the same thing that I always do. That is to look for some information on the web and some good tutorials and see what I could find. I found some great tutorials. Well, these are the ones that I found. So I'm going to tell you right now the best tutorials that I found. I found three of them. The first I'm going to mention is by far the best of them. This one is by Tracy J. Butler. It uses characters from her webcomic that is called Black a Daisy and this is real good and I'm going to tell you why right now as soon as I look at my teeth. This is really good because at first it shows some common mistakes that people do when trying to draw expressions which is something really good to have if you know if you're doing those mistakes it's nice to see a tutorial that notices them that you can change that 
then uh, it is actually really cute and funny like the way this girl draws is amazing and by what I could tell from her Patreon page she's doing fine and she deserves it because it's amazing and it goes through other things like using the whole volume of the face for the expression like squishing, squashing and stretching and all of that and you know tilting of the head and using the rest of the body to enhance the expression that you're making I know that we're I'm focusing just on the face but that is something nice to see on the tutorial so that's amazing, check it out, it's great. Now the next one is by Elixir Mai. I took it from the DeviantArt page. Uh, the thing that I liked about this one is that it divides the, the face in different modules like I did on yesterday's video, but it also tells you about which part you should focus on depending on the expression that you're drawing. And then it goes on to other things that you may have seen on the last video on, on the other tutorial with the cats. But it's useful, it's a lot more cartoony and simplistic, which is nice if you're looking for that. So go check it out. And the last one, this one is by Paddy Doocy. He has a Tumblr page where there's um, tutorials and artwork and all of that. And this one, what I liked about this one is that it focuses a lot on each expression individually. You know how yesterday I tried to focus on an overall idea on how to move the face, so you can draw all expressions? Well, this one's, this tutorial goes into detail on each of these expressions uh, with useful tips and some very nice drawing, so I liked it a lot, you should check it out. And that's it. So once I experimented with my own ideas and once I had some few tutorials, I decided to use some reference to see if I could learn anything else. Now I chose some photos of Benedict Cumberbatch doing some really weird but really interesting expressions. I thought that, well, I was going to use the same model that I used on the first part to draw the same expressions. Well, that didn't go well. Let's see, what am I doing wrong? It's like there's, there's some confusion in his face that I, I don't think I can grasp. Oh god, this is so difficult! What did I get myself into? And then I decided that, well, maybe instead of trying to draw that on a lady face, I was just going to try to, try to just copy the expression on any face that I could draw besides the picture. Yeah, that didn't go well either. This won't be my best drawings, I won't be really proud of them. Like, these are not my best drawings at all, I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to understand what is it that... Uh... So, the last thing that I could do was just try to figure out what the hell his face was doing, and that is exactly what I did. Now, clearly you can see because of the direction of the lips and you can see by these curves here that this is going this way. And he is stretching a bit his face, that's why, you know, you can tell because his mouth is open and you can see his tongue, so he's not like, he's not like this. So this is all going down, this is what makes his, up, his eyes so open. Now, if you put a hand in front of the face, you can see that, you know, his eyebrows are not making any expression actually, they're just like normal static. He's doing most of the expression in this one with just the lower part of the face right from the nose down. In this one here you can see that all this energy going here and he's opening his mouth like... and he's not you know, this is still going down, he's not tensing any muscles. If you cover his eyes, his mouth is pretty relaxed, it looks like he's just talking. His eyes though, this, this is going up, he's just doing this with his eyes. Now this one, and this one is amazing because you think like, oh this one is so obvious, it is so cartoony, but I was trying to draw it and it drove me a bit crazy. So here you can see that he's bringing his chin forward. What else? Like, 
I'm trying to make the face, I don't know if it is my best face, because the eyebrows seems seem to be going up, but with this, like, he's still bringing all of this up, and he looks just so crazy, and I don't know, I'm trying to learn as I go here, I'm sorry, I, I can tell, like, if you look at his nose, you can tell that like, here, the tension of his mouth is bringing the nose down, and here, the nose, nose is going, going up. up. Hi everyone, I don't know what the hell happened, but for some reason, all the audio on my recording went crazy for the next two minutes and a half, so I'm going to do a voiceover. As you can see, all the tension of the muscles on the cheek are going up, and apparently I'm moving to the next image. Now, oh, what's impressive about this one is, well, you just focus on the nose. See how the nose is all stretched up and at the same time is stretched down? Well, you can also see here on the cheeks that everything is going towards the point between the nose and the eyebrows. While the sides of the eyebrows are going up, it is all enhanced by the lower eyelid that is going up as well to make his face more crazy and then he's bringing all of his face, all of his mouth forward. Now this one is a lot more relaxed than the previous one. You can tell that the eyebrow do some kind of like wavy line. One of them is going up, the other one is going down. This is like if you cover the eyes well, in the camera, like if you cover the screen, you can see that the mouth is pretty relaxed. Once I've done that and once I've felt so sad for myself for not being able to actually draw separately all the expressions that I saw in the pictures, I said like, well, I clearly need more practice, I won't be able to nail this in just one week. So I'm going to focus on other parts of the stretchiness of the face. On the first part, I was focusing on what the face does when it moves. But then I decided that I was going to focus on what the face does when it's not moving, but when it's moved. So for example, if like you're getting your face like this, or if you're getting punched, or if you're just inflating your cheeks like... So I decided to try and figure out how to do all of that stuff, and this is exactly what happened. Okay, here we go. So first of all, let's do the board ones. I may move the hands because I don't have, you know, it's not something like you draw the hand first and the rest of the face later, but you have to do it like kind of all at once. So I don't know how this is going to look, but let's try. So board. So you can tell that because this is going up this way. This is going to be like this, like, and this is, you know, just a bit up. Let's do the eyes, let's do like really bored eyes. Just so you know, because I didn't want to do a bad video like yesterday's video, I already practiced all of this. But since I'm filming, I might be rushing just a bit, so it might not look as good as I want to. I still have some other examples to show you in case that happens. So yeah, so this gets a little bit squashed. Now the lips. Sorry, I'm a bit quiet here. So see that the important thing is that this mass here is the flexible one. Well, they're going to be looking on the side to save up some time. Like this mass here is the flexible one and it's the one that gets affected the most when you're doing things like that clearly. But you see like, for example, the chin, this is a pretty uh, static place. You can compare this this cheek to this cheek where it is relaxed. Like the only thing that you're doing is just grabbing all this mask and lifting it up. And it brings actually it closes this eye just a bit. Because even though 
it kind of ends this mask it kind of ends here not actually on the eyelid but here just a bit below it still affects a bit the eyelid because it affects its position Maybe this is just a bit open. Okay, eyebrows are okay. Uh, let me see how it looks. Remember to always flip your drawings horizontally to see, look for things that you don't normally see. It always helps. So yeah, I'm going to erase this. She looks pretty bored, doesn't she? And I'm going to get this part of the hand out of the way. Now, of course, that to this, I had, you had to add it, like a lot of body language and the neck and whatnot, because here, like with the static head, it just looks like I'm doing this, which I am. But if you're bored, it's like your hand is tilted a bit. The neck is like, well, it's a whole other thing. Now, pinch. Okay, so the thing about pinch is that there, it, it is very subtle. I mean, uh, there are not like a lot of lines that can define this. Like if I do this, you can see this line right here, but not much else. But you have to start like stretching everything just a bit. So for example, if we start with the mouth, like this is going to be the the mass that you're bringing towards the hand that the hand is pulling. So if this was going to be like here, well, you just bring it just a bit. And as you stretch the lips, they lose their lip like shape. Look at this. Like they become like this kind of like two worms. It's not very attractive, but it is how it happens. They become like, because they're so stretchy, they can lose their shape. So when you're pinching, you get some of that. They're printing from this side. Like this is not, not not the most fun to do, but it is. You just kind of stretch all this. where the hand is pulling and now like well this part of the face remains absolutely unaffected by it so I'll just do it fast Maybe I can just exaggerate this a bit. Like, I know the hand is actually not pulling that much, but it looks good. Well, let me see if it looks good. Well, yes, it does. It looks like the hand is pulling. And well, if we had to like design the shape, it would be something like this, like it's Right, like it's pulling that way. I'm going to erase it so it looks good. So in the end, the important thing is seeing how this big chunk of expressive mass that you have here affects all well, things like the lips and sometimes the shape of the nose and the nostrils. And well, sometimes just a bit the eyelids. So the squish, the squishy mouth. Okay, so this one actually really brings like the lips really forward. It brings all the mass like to this part. So it actually affects the nose a lot. We look, it's like, who's that pretty baby? So you had to like really press the lips and bring them forward. 
Oh, did you do this? So someone is squishing this girl's face. And she's like, uh, help me! I don't like getting my face squished. I wonder, actually, no one likes getting their face squished like this. Actually, nobody likes to get their cheek pulled like this. Why do we do that to kids? I mean, I hated that as a kid, didn't you? So this is all going forward, it really affects the shape of the nose because it's bringing a lot of mass towards the nostrils, like this, you see, it affects this. So that's pretty much it for the squish. Like there's a lot of, like this part of the skin is going to be like super tense. Because you're doing this, I know, well, you can tell, you can tell with the beard, but you're just really tensing this part of the face, all of that skin. And this, well, the volume wise, is like this squishy thing. Right? Does it make any sense? It does? I know it does. They are looking pretty good. I think I am compensating for yesterday's video. I know it wasn't that bad. But when I had to draw it, uh, like, well, I wasn't proud of myself that day. So, the squishy face, now we move on to the punch. This is actually the one that I was trying to learn, it is also the most complicated, because in order to add some dynamism to the punch, you can't have like the static face and uh, it's more like, like, it, like, ooh, it, I don't know, I have to see. So, well, yes, I'm drawing a woman getting punched, I'm sorry. Because in this one, well, in the punch, you kind of have to convey emotions, so, like... She's angry, she doesn't like getting punched. Let me see. bit in pain now this is going to go up and it's going to be pressed a bit because even when you're getting punched you're like Arr, Arr, you know you're like with this side of the face you're still doing this so we move everything to the side let me see because you're moving all of this part of the lips to the side, but on the other side of the face, you're like, well... Let's see, I know that I make really weird faces when I'm trying to figure this out. But you know, my face right now is the only reference that I have, and... I started shooting this video and I forgot to bring the mirror. Just don't do that. Because you will end up making weird faces while you draw and not actually looking at the weird face that you're making while you draw, like I'm doing right now. So I'm not very comfortable with this skirt. It's going a bit higher. It's not my best punch face. Actually, no, it is my best punch face. I, it is the best I've drawn to date, but it is, you know, it could be better. So this is moving to this side. 
maybe it's just a little more teeth. Let me see, where are the teeth? The teeth are here. It still looks pretty good, right? I mean, well, I could have done a bit better. I have to practice it a lot more. But the way this mass moves, I mean, it goes upward. It's very similar to, to this, actually. But it involves actually well, a bit more emotion from the one that is receiving the punch, right? I, I think that the importance of drawing a punch, besides how the mass moves, is actually being good at portraying the pain. I'm not there yet. I know I'm not there yet. But I'll get there. And so will you. Let's try to be like cheery and optimistic about this. It's all like it takes a lot of practice. This one is of a bowling phase that is going to be like for pretty much the opposite regarding tension to the squish. When you have the squish, everything is going a bit forward, and when you're pulling, everything is going a bit backward. But it's also a lot more subtle like when you're doing the pinch I don't know if these are the actual names for the gestures uh, you know sorry for my bad English and all that but we can take for this one you can take some lessons from the pinch like for example well you know that the lips are going to be a lot more elastic And you know that the eyes, like if you're going to draw eyes, if I'm doing these like cartoony eyes that are responding to this shape, and I'm going, if they're going to be like that, you know that from the tension of pulling, this is going to go a bit higher. This is where the, the skin is going to get tense. And from this angle, well, that's a bit harder. And the eyebrows are going to get stretched a bit. I don't know exactly in what circumstance you, we're going to use something like this when you're drawing. But, well, considering that we're trying to get all of the stretchiness of the face, like, well, pulling like this, well, it is something to explore and try to experiment with. I don't know if, if, if it looks as tense as I want it to be. But also, there's not much to pull when you're doing this. So yeah, oh, okay, let's give it some like... Because I don't want to risk like looking like it is um, like this is the natural shape of the eye. Like what I'm trying to do is looks like look like the eye is like all of this part of the face is stretching. But well, it's not easy. Like in context with the hand, it looks like it is getting stretched, especially with the lips. Like you look at the other faces, and if this were the same character, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry for that, sorry. I'm going back, I'm going back. Here I am. Like, if you look and it's the same character, well, it looks like the face is getting stretched. Maybe that's actually all it takes, like, well, some good character design, which is not my best suit. And finally, the inflated. Now, this one I didn't practice. I just wanted to do six, and I thought, like, well, well when you inflate the cheeks, like, well, how does it look? Well, it does get inflated there. It gets all swollen here. The eyes don't seem to be very affected. You can see that I'm touching my face to figure this out because I forgot the mirror, right? Okay, so if the eyes are not affected, you can use it like this. 
Now to give it a bit more expression, I'm going to rise, raise the eyelid just a bit. Now this, if this is going to be like full with air, it's going to be near the mouth, not near the cheeks. And now the chin will remain unaffected. So does the nose, like, it doesn't seem to be affected when you inflate your cheeks. But there's still some like uh, this, like there, there's this volume here getting larger. Also, there's no, like, you, you see when you're squishing that there's like some a crease there. When you're inflating, that doesn't happen. It's like the lips are painted over a ball. At least that is the feeling that I get. Let me see. Well, it kind of works. Does it? Maybe it needs to be a little bit more exaggerated. Maybe just do some small crease near the Ah, that looks a bit better. Also, it's important to notice that this, since the chin is not getting inflated, you have to actually separate the lips and the chin, like make this. So, how do they look? Do you think that you can use this type of exercises to get a better grasp on how to draw emotions? So that's it. And what do you think? Do you think I nailed? Do you think I actually got a good idea that by using the cheeks and the volumes of the cheeks and how they move, it becomes easier to grasp how to draw expressions instead of focusing on like, the eyes and the mouth? Because I actually found it not only very interesting, but really Fun to do to think of that way like instead of just the parts that you look at when you're uh, looking at people's faces and expressions just focus on the whole face as one big volume that moves in a certain way to convey a certain emotion so well that's it for this week I hope you liked this video I actually enjoyed doing it a lot even though I got really frustrated with the Benedict Cumberbatch part of the well the, the, it wasn't my best video but still, it's a good one. I'll see you next week. There's going to be more videos. If you want to just get a small video each day to, to look at the updates, uh, just subscribe. Also, if you have any comments about what I'm doing wrong or what I'm doing right, or if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. I'm going to read them all and answer to them all because no one ever leaves comments, so who cares? I'm Mojave. I can draw. I'm sure that you can draw too, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.